And when he said, repent ye, uh, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was literally talking about the, the kingdom principles, the word of God represents his kingdom. And he's literally talking about that word being in you. If you have the word of God in you and the spirit of God in you, then you have the kingdom of heaven within you. And, and, and it comes with all power. It comes with all authority. And God operates through you, through power and authority. And uh, that's a, a key principle to have in your life. Because if we were to go to uh, the book of St. Luke, uh, chapter, let's go there real quick. Chapter 17 and uh, along verses 20 and 21. Uh, just to further illustrate the point that I'm trying to make, because this is a, a very dynamic point. Uh, if you get this, then you get and you can be able to understand Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And um, if you have it, say it, man. All right, uh, Luke. This is not where we're going to be teaching from tonight, but I wanted to read it because it's important. Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, mm -hmm. when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Mm -hmm. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. All right, amen. So that kind of further illustrates my point about the kingdom of heaven in this dispensation, in this time. In the Old Testament, it was, the kingdom was located in Jerusalem. When the future comes, uh, <laughs> thank you, Lord, it's coming. <laughs> when the future comes, the kingdom is going to be back, relocated in Jerusalem. But in this time, the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's in you. you it's coming without observation. You can't see it come. Uh, but, but it arrives through his spirit. And it's manifested in you through his word. Amen. That's key. The spirit and the word. They all operate to manifest the kingdom within you. And that's why I said the kingdom of heaven in this dispensation is the principles and the doctrine and the word of God operating in you. Uh, notice the scripture says the word is quick and it's powerful. Uh, and, and, and it's alive and, and it's powerful. It's able to accomplish great things. If a person applies God's word to their everyday life, it's able to accomplish great things. Amen? Amen. Um, so, so read that again, just one more time. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, the Pharisees were asking Jesus a question. Alright? When the kingdom of God should come. Now notice, he asked them the question, when shall the kingdom come? When shall the kingdom come? We should be asking ourselves that same question. <laughs> when shall the kingdom come? And you'll find out the answer to that question is uh, when you are born again uh, of the body and of the spirit, uh, then the kingdom comes within you. I mean, what does that He answered them and said, he, What did he say? The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. You can't see it with your eyes. Neither shall they say, Lo here uh -huh. or Lo there. It's not right now in a geographical location. Read. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's within you. And how is it within you? If, if through the Spirit of God, amen, and through the Word of God. That's how it gets in you. You being born again of the water and of the Spirit. And, and, and operating in the word of God. Amen? Amen. 
So the kingdom of God is the, if someone asks you what is the kingdom of God, you tell them it's the principles of, of God's rule within you. It's God's doctrine. It's God's word operating in you. Amen? All right. So let's go back over here. Uh, and you know, we have to spend time, uh, if you allow me to say this today, going after the kingdom of heaven, the principles of God, and then living it out on a daily basis. Amen? That's important. Let your light shine. Live it out on a daily basis. All right. Let's then go uh, to look at, at the principles of the kingdom. And the principles of the kingdom is in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. If you want to get an understanding of the principles of the kingdom, it's in my, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 1. Ah, oh, Take heed. What do you Is there any questions on what I just said? Is there any confusion about what I just said? Alright, can anybody repeat what I just said? Principles, principles of God is, is working in you through the Spirit and the Word. And the Word, and that represents what? Kingdom. Kingdom. There you have it. Amen. Good. Now I can move on. <laughs> Alright, go ahead. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men mm -hmm. to be seen of them. Yeah. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. All right, so Jesus now is moving towards uh, uh, doing good deeds. When you look at that word alms, it doesn't, just, it doesn't just mean giving, but it means doing good deeds. Good, good deeds. There's a difference. I used to think that alms and giving were the same. But alms and giving are two different things. Alms represents uh, one doing good deeds. You can also give to do a good deed, but it's really representative of, 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 of doing a good deed. And, and giving uh, just represents you giving an, an offering, you giving a donation. You follow me? All right. So notice what he says. He said, take heed that... Uh, you do not hear alms before men. And why do we bring that principle up? It's because people were doing good deeds before men. Uh, for what purpose? To be seen of them. Uh, so Jesus is saying, uh, when you do good deeds before men, uh, don't do it with the motive to be seen of others. Uh, because if you do that, you're going to lose your reward. Uh, you might as well keep it. <laughs> uh, and, and that's important because uh, God does not want you to get the glory. He wants to get the glory at all times. Alright? Hallelujah. So take me that verse again. Take heed that you do not your alms before men uh -huh. to be seen of them. Yes. Otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Now, now I can do deeds, and people see me do good deeds, but, but I'm not doing it to purposely be seen. Follow? Huh? I'm not doing it purposely. Don't do it purposely to be seen. And, and, and look, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Now, that, that last clause there is a theme throughout this whole chapter about, about your reward in heaven. Amen? And Jesus wants you to focus not on things of this earth, but he wants you to focus on things in heaven. Amen? Set your affections on things above. A kingdom citizen, if you allow me to say it that way, because this is what this chapter is about. Living, living as a kingdom citizen, a representative of God, we focus on heaven. Amen. Everything that we do, everything that we say is a representation of heaven. 
Amen? Amen. Why? Because we are heaven's agents upon this earth. Uh, uh, that's, 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 uh, this is not our home. Uh, hallelujah. We, we originated in heaven, and we're going to go back to heaven. Amen? Amen? But eventually, after uh, uh, the rapture and a, and a few million years go by, we're going to come back to heaven when he makes the new heaven and the new earth for which to dwell. But that's, that's in the future. But right now, he's saying, set your affections uh, and think about your reward in heaven. Amen? Uh, labor for the things that, that, that don't perish, but labor for the things that are eternal, that are everlasting. Uh, when you come into Christ and you, you, you start to live for him, your focus should not be on temporal things. Huh? God knows that you need temporal things, but your focus should be on things that are eternal. Huh? I like that song. Build your hopes on things eternal. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what we're looking for. Huh? Because everything that you see with your natural eyes is for what? Perish. Perish. It's going to be burned up. Amen. Don't make a, a, a big show 
when you decide uh, when to give to somebody, it's not about a fan, a uh, fair, it's not about cameras and lights, uh, it's not about uh, uh, showing uh, yourself off, read. As the hypocrites do in the synagogue. Not, 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 not the hypocrites do that. Uh, in the synagogue, those that, that, that were religious leaders, they did that. Uh, they, they looked at uh, riches uh, in, in, in one's status more valuable than one's service to God. Uh, they looked at uh, uh, their, their status. I'm a bishop, so therefore I, I'm better than you. Uh, and, and I'm giving. Uh, and and I, want, I want you to know, uh, oh my God, I, see my, I, hope, I hope my other friends don't get messed up when I'm about to say this. Come on and kiss my ring. Uh, because, because I got that kind of status. Uh, uh, you follow what I'm saying? It ain't about that. <laughs> it ain't about that. Uh, it's about helping and doing it God's way. All right, read. And in the streets, that the, oh wait, let me start. Therefore, when thou doest thy alms, uh -huh. do not sound a trumpet before thee. Yes. As the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets. Yes. That they may have glory of men. Verily mm -hmm. I say unto you, they have their reward. Alright, go on. Uh, to be seen of men, to be have glory of men, because if you do it that way, you're gonna have your reward when they catch you on your back. Uh, but we want God to be our big pastor, don't we? Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. We want God to bless us. You know, one of the greatest illustrations of that is Abraham. Uh, Abraham went and rescued Thoth, uh, and, and, and he also rescued another king that was, that was there in that territory. And the king uh, wanted to turn around and bless Abraham. And Abraham said, oh no, not so. Uh, at least you say you may Abraham rich. Uh, trying to take God's glory. Amen? Uh, and God honored Abraham for that. Uh, hallelujah. Because God wants to make you rich. Uh, and, and what God calls rich, uh, the world doesn't call it rich. God calls rich a rich person that is, that is rich for his principles. That, is, that has love.
If you follow after this principle, you'll be blessed. Amen? All right, read. What's that? And without prayers? Now, he's moving toward prayer now. Because the reason why he's, he's, he's setting this up is because people are praying the wrong way. The, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they were, they were giving the people the wrong example to follow. You follow? Huh? All right, read. And without prayers. Now he says, without prayers. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. All right, let me ask you. Should a kingdom citizen pray? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Are you required to pray? Yes. Huh? Let me say this. Is it a commandment for you to pray? Amen. 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 So we have to pray. Am I right?
Yeah. 
because an offense is related to a fault. Amen? And 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 they they violate your will. Father, uh, man, you ought to, he says you gotta forgive them, release them. Huh? If you want God to release you when you violate his will. Amen. Um, all right, read. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, uh -huh. neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Now look, verse 14 and verse 15 are literally the same. And he's doing that for emphasis. Amen? For emphasis. He's motivating us to be like God so that we don't lose out on our reward. Alright? 16. Uh-huh. Moreover, when you fast. Now look, he's expecting you to fast. A child of the kingdom should fast. He said, moreover, when you fast, not as a hypocrite. Uh, don't be like a hypocrite. Of a sad countenance. Huh? If I walk around uh, being sad, uh, 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 and walk around looking afflicted, uh, 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 so that you can appear unto people in the past. Uh, that should be done in secret. Yeah. Read. For they disfigure their faces, uh -huh. that they may appear unto men to fast. Once again, that goes in line with the giving of alms that goes in line with prayer. And now he's talking about fasting uh, to be seen of other people. I was going to say that uh, your heart, like you said, your heart is desperately wicked. You yeah. Know, it, 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 when you think you fooling people, mm. <laughs> you know, you're opening up room for the devil. Yeah. You know, that's what happened in uh, Adam and Eve. He, he, he added that thou shalt not touch it. It ain't saying you couldn't get touched. It. Once you open up the avenue, <laughs> once you open up the avenue to him, he's going to take advantage of it. Absolutely. It's, it's the same with forgiveness. I forgive you. I didn't like I forget. I forgive you because sooner or later I'm going. I'm not perfect. Sooner or later I'm going to fall short. Absolutely. And I'm going to want forgiveness. And if, and if I don't forgive someone, that leaves that door open for Satan to come back into your mind and, and, and bind you up. Absolutely. And you, won't, you, you pray and won't believe God will do something for you because of what you did because you hold that forgiveness. Now, now you bring another great point into view. Um, every commandment hinges on every other commandment. If you break one, you're guilty of a whole. So, so what are you saying, Brother Pastor? That you've got to uh, uh, focus on keeping your life right so that when you do anything, it will be of none offense. That's what Paul said. That's why he said, let man do what? Examine himself. You have the reward. 
If you want to give alms to be seen, you have the reward. If you want to fast to be seen, you have the reward. All right, read. 17. Mm -hmm. But thou, when thou fastest. Now look, he's just trying to tell me. When you fast, anoint thy head uh -huh. and wash thy face. All right. Uh, appear to others as you're not fasting. Brush your teeth. Wash your face. Huh? Don't put your fasting clothes on. Don't walk around in the sack ball and ask you. Huh? 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 You might not know. Huh? Huh? Because God knows. Am I right? Huh? 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 That thou appear not unto men to fast. All right. This is not about the man sees. This is about the God sees. It's about what God sees in your gift. It's about what God sees in your arm. Your good deeds. It's about what God sees in your prayers. It's about what God sees in your fasting. All right? All right. Here. But unto thy Father which is in secret, uh -huh. and thy Father which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Now, he'll reward you for your alms, he'll reward you for your prayers, and he'll reward you for your fasting. Amen. God is full of rewards. <laughs> he'll reward your good behavior. Now, this good behavior is righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. All right, read. Nineteen. Uh huh. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, uh huh, where moth and rust doth corrupt, yeah, and where thieves break through <coughs> and steal. Now, now Jesus, he's getting into one, 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 one attitude now. He's 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 getting into one inner desire now, and literally. He's telling you not to be greedy. Greed will, will uh, choke the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Greed. It will, it will rule your life if you allow it. Lust. Did you feel the mission? Uh, 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 what's her name? Eve. What was in her? The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye and the pride of life. Huh? And, and absolutely, it's no. all. Huh? Yeah. And, and that's what got her. Greed. We can't, Jesus is talking here. Huh? Don't be, uh, uh, <laughs> my God, I won't say something pretty hard here. Don't be greedy after the world, but be greedy after righteousness. Hunger and thirst after righteousness, and he shall be. Go after that. Amen. So look, read that verse again. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, uh -huh. where moth and rust doth corrupt, uh -huh. and where thieves break through and steal. Why? Right, because everything that you see upon this earth is going to be uh, uh, destroyed. So why should I? Uh, I love these things. That's what he's teaching. Uh, don't, don't go 
But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Now look, do the deeds. That's how you get treasures in heaven. Live righteous. That's how you get treasures in heaven. Go there. And you know what? I'm just now seeing the, the true connection as I'm speaking to you. And in this respect, go there. Of those other verses, he said, if you do these things, you'll get your reward in heaven. That's how you store up your reward by doing the things that Jesus talked about. Praying in secret. Fasting in secret. Giving in secret. That's how you store up things in heaven. Y'all see that? Hallelujah. Alright, read. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Uh -huh. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. Alright, now, now the elements of this world, they can't corrupt those things. Uh, that you can store for yourself in heaven. Uh, and he said that you're going to be rewarded according to how your work shall be. Uh, it's not about me uh, doing, uh, 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 being a servant to the world. I got to be a servant to God. Am I right? Doing the things that he desires. All right, me. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. Uh -huh. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, if you focus on the things that be of God, that's where your heart is going to be. And that word heart, it, it, it means uh, your will, your desire, your emotions. It means your, your soul, your total being. It means your everything. Uh, God, God wants your heart uh, and, and your total being to be on Him. In other words, we, we sometimes miss it in this respect. God wants your total focus uh, to be on Him and Him alone, and that He's the only one you really want to satisfy. He's the only one you really want to please. Huh? Because if you seek to please God, if you seek to satisfy God, your life here on this earth will be blessed. Oh, thank you. That takes a sacrifice. Heart beat. 22. Uh huh. The light of the body is the eye. Uh huh. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. So, what Jesus is teaching here, he's literally teaching focus. Literally teaching focus. Amen? And what the Jews looked at as your eyes as being a, a, a inspection of your soul. What you see through your eyes, uh, it affects your soul. That's what they believe. That's what the scripture is talking about. Right? He's saying that if your focus is not on the light, who is the light? Jesus. Yeah, he's the light. Huh? And if your focus is not on the light, then your focus is on the darkness. You follow? And if, if your focus is on the light, your soul is full of light. If your focus on evil, sin, your soul is full of God's evil, sin. So he's teaching about focus. Amen? Can you go to that? He's teaching about focus. Are you focused on the light? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Well, he said, light. <laughs> he said, I'm the light of the world. <laughs> um, and, and you have to focus on him. Amen? If you don't focus on him, then you're, then you're focusing in on evil, darkness. And, and that affects your whole body. That affects your whole life. Alright? So let's read that again. What does it say? The light of the body is the eye. Uh -huh. If therefore thy eye, thine eye be single, uh -huh. thy whole body shall be full of light. 
No, if your eye be single, focus on Jesus, focus on the kingdom, your whole body is full of what? Life. Life. Huh? Um, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Amen. Purpose, the will of God. Uh, it just it, it exudes from you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, it's in you. It's all in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, my But if thine eye be evil. Now, if, if your eye be evil, if you're focused on darkness, thy read, whole body shall be full of darkness. Huh? Full of darkness. If I'm focused on the things of this world, if I'm focused on sin, uh, if I'm focused on my own will, my own
Yeah, it is written. It's on getting behind me, say. Amen? Resist the devil. Oh, I mean. Holy God. Uh -huh. Therefore I say unto you, yeah. take no thought for your life, uh -huh. what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Yes. Nor yet for your body, yeah. what you shall put on. Uh -huh. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Mm -hmm. Read. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, uh -huh. neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Mm -hmm. Are ye not much better than they? Yes. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Mm -hmm. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider <coughs> the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Yeah. <coughs> Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, mm -hmm. shall ye not much more clothe how he, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Mm -hmm. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or withal, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. All right, all right. So, so the reason why I let you read all that is because he first he talked about your treasures, your greed. Then he talked about uh, uh, evil. Evil desires, being an evil person, the light, if it's not focused on him, it's focused on God. Then we talk about anxiety, huh? cares, anxiety. These are the number one, two, and three enemies to us operating in his kingdom. Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. When, when we uh, focus on those things, being rich, focus on not being righteous, but being evil. Focus on uh, 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 letting the, the cares of this world control our behavior, causing me to, to be anxious, causing me to be nervous, when, when God knows that I need these things, operating in fear other than faith. Those are enemies to the king. Jesus says, don't be like that. Don't be like don't be like that. Why? Because God knows you have need of all those things. He, he knows what you have need of. And he has promised. Did he promise? He promised to supply what? All your needs. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And, and can God not? Huh? Can God not?